This is Mercury. It's the smallest planet in our solar system, and it's also the closest to the Sun. Oddly though, it's not the hottest planet. That title goes to Venus. Mercury is distinctly moonless, even though dozens of much smaller bodies in our solar system possess at least one moon in their orbit. So why doesn't Mercury have a moon? To answer that, we need to look at how moons are formed, and why the Sun screws it all up. Number one, moons form at the same time as their parent planets. When the gas giants like Saturn and Jupiter were being formed, they were surrounded by a cloud of gas and dust. As these planets started to take shape, this cloud then collapsed into a ring that began to orbit them. After a while, this ring started to undergo a process called accretion. This is where the particles within the ring stick together via gravity and get bigger and bigger over time. The scientific verb for this is to coalesce. Eventually, the coalesced gas and dust became big enough to morph themselves into a sphere under their own gravity. And, ta-da, you've got yourself a bunch of moons. If this process sounds familiar, you should give yourself a pat on the back, because it's also how the planets in our solar system were formed. So, if Mercury formed from accretion, then why didn't a moon accrete around Mercury as it was being formed? Well, there wasn't really any material for a moon to accrete from. When the planets were still forming, the solar system was very young, and the Sun was in an early stage of stellar development known as the T-Tauri phase, during which it was blasting out a solar wind which is much, much stronger than it is today. These intense T-Tauri winds swept all the lighter materials such as hydrogen, methane and ice far from the Sun into the outer regions of the solar system, and it's out of this abundance of lighter elements, with some heavier ones, that the gas giants formed from. Since they were far enough away from the Sun to not get bombarded with the supersonic gale force solar winds, some moons actually got the chance to form around the gas giants. But why isn't there a Mercurian moon made of the heavy elements that were not blown away? Well, simply put, Mercury used them all up. Once the heavier elements coalesced to form Mercury's core, all the silicates, aka the rocky materials, were gravitationally attracted to this heavy mass. Over time, these silicates formed Mercury's mantle and surface. Since all the materials went into making Mercury, there was nothing left to make a moon from. But let's assume there was some stuff going spare. A Mercurian moon could never have been formed, because Mercury is too close to the Sun. Which brings me nicely to the next scenario for how planets get moons. Number 2. Planets capture moons. To understand this concept a little better, we should talk about a parameter known as the Hill Sphere. The Hill Sphere is a region around a planet in which it can hold onto a moon and keep it in a nice, stable orbit. This parameter takes into account the mass of the planet, the mass of the star that the planet orbits, and the distance between them. Oh, and since Mercury's orbit isn't perfectly circular, we need to take its eccentricity into account. Putting all these numbers into this equation, we get a Hill Sphere radius of about 175,000 kilometers. But because Mercury is so close to the Sun, even if we place an object well within Mercury's Hill Sphere, the massive gravitational attraction of the Sun would overcome that of Mercury's and pull the object towards the Sun. And this is assuming Mercury had the opportunity to catch a moon in the first place. Mercury has virtually no effect on the objects of the asteroid belt, and because it's so close to the heaviest object in the solar system, everything is going to be drawn to the Sun, not Mercury. If an asteroid, comet, kettle, whatever, just so happened to enter Mercury's hill sphere, they may stick around for a bit, but sooner or later, the Sun would pull them away from Mercury and place them into a separate, irregular orbit around itself. But, if you're a fan of this channel, you'll know there is one more way to make a moon. Number 3. Moons can form out of impacts. There are many examples in our solar system in which a moon has formed from the debris thrown up into space after a massive collision on the parent planet. The best example of this? Our own moon. Now, we have many photos of Mercury, and it's obviously covered in craters, some of which are huge, meaning there have definitely been massive impacts in Mercury's past. So, why no moon? Well, and I think you know the answer to this by now, it's because Mercury is too close to the Sun. Even if a moon did coalesce out of the impact debris, the Sun would just pull it out of Mercury's hill sphere and place it into an orbit around itself instead. So, there you have it, Mercury was doomed to be moonless from the start. The young Sun blew away all the material it could make a moon from, then it pulled away anything that could have been a moon towards itself, and if Mercury somehow managed to nurture a moon after a massive impact, the Sun took that one away too. Sorry Mercury, it was just never meant to be.